What's going on guys? My name is Mike and this is the Looter's Guide to Hyperion Weaponry, the last of the eight weapon companies. So keep in mind that these stats might not work for the original Borderlands, so if you're playing the first one, they might not be true to that game. Now Hyperion may not be as complex as say TDOR, but it's got some interesting stuff, so we're going to go ahead and cover that right now. Now Hyperion uses this stabilizing technology, which means you start off with some hefty sway and recoil, but then the stabilizer ends up taking effect, and this makes for some of the most accurate guns on Pandora. Essentially, the longer you fire, the more accurate it becomes. That's as simple as you can really put it. Now, after you've gotten to that full effect of the stabilizer, there's hardly any reason to aim down the sight, because all it's going to do is block your screen and, you know, cover parts where you might not be able to see enemies. And there's once you get to that full effect, you might as well just let go. There's no point in holding it anymore, because it's going to be as accurate as you're aiming down the sights. Hyperion's got this futuristic look to it, not exactly the same as Malawan, which is way more futuristic looking, but it's got this really cool, sleek, yellow finish with some of the, some red hues on the guns. It, it's kind of interesting, actually it kind of reminds me of McDonald's. Now Hyperion makes four different weapon types, like 80% of the weapon companies on Pandora do. You got pistols, shotguns, sniper rifles, and submachine guns, also known as SMGs, that's kind of what I'm going to refer to as. And uh, there's really only two that are that good, I'm going to explain that right now. Now the pistols aren't that great, it's just not the best weapon of choice for a Hyperion gun. Because of the stabilizing technology, it's more geared towards larger clips, so Really, just a rule of thumb is that if it's got a large clip and it's Hyperion, it's probably going to do pretty well. The problem with pistols is they usually don't have that many rounds in a clip, so this is not the best option. It's not that effective. Now, everybody loves Hyperion shotguns, and I think the biggest reason is that the stabilizing technology works so well with this. The first few shots, you know, it's got some heavy sway, but it really doesn't matter because it's a shotgun, and you're going to expect that from every other shotgun in the game. After those first few shots though, it goes into this really accurate sniper fire kind of thing. I mean, you could shoot someone across miles it seems, and you'll still hit them and do tons of damage. It, it's really cool, I like it. It's, it's one of my favorites of Hyperion's weapon types. Now I don't care for the sniper rifles at all. When I pick up a sniper rifle, I want to be able to hit them first shot straight in the head, not have this unbelievable amount of sway, and that's what you're going to find in a Hyperion sniper. Now just like with any other of the weapon types, you're going to find that it gets more accurate over time, but with a sniper rifle, who really wants that? You just want to be able to pop out, pop in, pop out, and just, you know, keep getting these shots and then just running away. That's how I like to play, honestly. But some people, they might want to run in with their sniper rifle, but then in that case, I just recommend going with a Vladoff. I just don't understand why anybody would want to use a, a Hyperion sniper. It doesn't work that well. Now, submachine guns are by far the star of Hyperion's technology. They are the optimal weapon for the use of stabilizing technology. And this is the biggest reason, and that is just the high clip size allows for such a large portion of the bullets to be highly accurate. There's really no points in picking the other guns, except for shotguns. Now, I have to do an honorable mention of the Energizing Bane. We all know what that is by now. And um, to be honest, I don't know what Hyperion was thinking. But that is a Hyperion submachine gun. So in the end, if I want to give my honest opinion on this, Hyperion is really only good for shotguns and submachine guns. Those are the only ones that are really worth your time. The sni sniper rifles, who wants to do, who wants to use that? And then with the pistols, it's too small of a clip to really end up being useful. The stabilizing technology is very unique by Hyperion, and those that are looking for accuracy would definitely enjoy this weapon if they can handle the first few shots. That's the only downside, but it's definitely one of the most accurate weapons in the game. All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this looter's guide, as well as the series in general, for the most part. So I know you got a lot of you guys wanted the E-Tech guides, some you know, some shield guides, and while that's kind of cool and it's, it's a possibility, I just, I need a break from Borderlands 2. I've been playing it since September and I just, I need a break. So don't expect it anytime soon, but it may happen. These guides take a ton of time to make, so I just, I need to, you know, rest a little bit. So I hope you guys can understand. Alright guys, what are your thoughts on Hyperion? And since we finally finished the eight companies and I'm not going to be making another looter's guide for a little while, what is your favorite company? in Borderlands 2, or even b both Borderlands. Just let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear your opinions, and if you see one of your favorite companies that someone already commented, 
then just go ahead and thumbs that up and we'll see which is the most popular amongst my viewers. That'd be kind of cool. So just go ahead and do that and uh, be sure to leave a rating guys. I, like I said earlier, this takes a ton of time to make and I just, I would love if you guys can leave some feedback of any kind. So that's going to wrap it up guys. Hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.